Okay, hey, we're going to get started here with soldier lethality. Um, my name is Chris Donahue. I'm the CFT director. Travis Thompson is my deputy back here. Uh, Chris Schneider and Elliot Kagans are around here that work this with us. And then uh, also we have uh, Mr. Sando and General Brito are also here from the COE. I would tell you the, the one thing about this is if there's any confusion of are we completely linked in with everything else that's going on at Fort Benning, absolutely. I would tell you our priorities are their priorities. If you would go to the next slide. So uh, of all the CFTs that are out there, the one thing that is different about ours is, um, you know, Dave Lesperance, my partner in crime there down there at Fort Benning, he is very focused on the next generation combat vehicle. Uh, ours is very broad, as you can see up here. So as you see our programs and our approach, we had to take a little bit different approach, and also we have a much wider uh, depth of what we're going on. Um, you can see how we're defining soldier lethality down there. And then um, this is one of the things that we're already working on. So if you could just read that quote and keep that in your mind as we go through this brief. Next slide. So this is, the, uh, this is our overarching purpose. Fight, win, and survive in combat now and tomorrow. We have to start delivering capability for our dismounted soldiers uh, pretty quickly here. This is uh, overall what our mission statement is. Um, but really what I want to talk to you about is our principles. So the first thing is, is that if you put anything into a squad, but it's specifically onto a soldier, you can't really tell us what that impact is. So we have to define that pretty quickly to make sure that we're developing the right things going forward. We're only fo focused on the 100,000 that close with the enemy. And that's for two purposes. The first one is, is just from a scale perspective, we know that this costs a lot. So we have to make sure that we're doing that. The other reason is, is that we want to make sure that we're taking care of people, not just infantry soldiers. So that includes the platoon medic, the FO, the CAV scout, and that's active National Guard and reserve, that very tiny part. So it's just not uh, the infantry active duty squad. That's, uh, you can see that we're collaborating with everybody. You'll see some of our Marine partners. There's some SOCOM guys here as well. Um, we just did a session to, to put this in an uh, example of every SOCOM brief their major programs, the Marines brief their major programs, and then we all agreed who was going to be uh, driving the different initiatives that are out there to make sure that we're, we're doing all the things together. Um, National Guard members, SOF, they're all part of our CFT as well, uh, to include all the other agencies that move a product going forward. These user touch points, you just saw that quote that was up there. That's from both uh, mechanized infantry, our ABCTs, uh, our CAV scouts, and also the traditional light airborne and ranger infantry, and then of course striker. Then we want to move at the speed of war. Um, and we want the technology to be able to grow. We know that technology changes pretty quickly. If it's not, doesn't have the ability to grow, we're probably not interested in bringing it on board as a CFT program. And then uh, Mr. Joe Latois is, is running around here. He's the director of the Secretary Mattis' Close Combat Task Force. Um, we are very well nested with him. In fact, we spent the morning with him and we'll spend the afternoon with him. They've also provided the bulk of the money for our programs. So that is uh, a very important uh, you know, task force that we're very well linked into. And then the last one here is this lethality analysis team. Back when we stood up in November, we realized very quickly that ours was a very broad portfolio, so we wanted to make sure that we were going after the right things. So out of all that, that's where we came up with this. They're working a number of things for us. I just told you we have to have the metrics right on a squad. They're working that. They're also making sure that we understand what's out there from an enemy perspective. I see Pete Jones out there. We're using the Russian New Generation study, and then also what we're seeing uh, with other near peers uh, to make sure that we are truly developing things that can accomplish what we need them to. Um, we're also making sure that all of industry, we've had several industry days for each topic that we're looking at, and most recently when we put this team together, we had about 160 members of industry in there with us to help develop this. Um, so that, that's our basic principles going forward. If you go to the next slide. So these are our initial capabilities that we're trying to develop above the line, and these are the future ones. 
So as you look at the squad uh, next generation weapon, the first program is to replace the squad automatic weapon. Okay, again, very specific. Um, and that's going after a, a very specific capability to defeat uh, a target that's out there. We've shared that information with industry in four industry days. Our first prototype opportunity notice has gone out. So we know that uh, industry will come back with five prototypes um, in about a year. And then uh, we have one government one that we're working as well. So that, that'll be that. The next system that we'll go after is the replacement of the M4 carbine. Um, and, and that's already uh, becoming a program and that, that'll be the next one. And again, everything we have right now works very well. This is changing because of the threat environment. I wanna make sure everybody understands that. We're just not changing to change. It's because of what our uh, peers and near peers have out there in this uh, equipment. A couple of different things that are with this. We do know that we'll have to develop new ammunition for this, and we're in the process of doing that. Uh, and then also we want to make sure that we put the best uh, technology for aim augmentation on there so that you will, what you see is what you kill with your first round. And that will be built into the very first version. Next thing is enhanced night vision goggles. And uh, really what I describe it as heads up display version 1.0. Uh, the, the first one, this is dual tube fusion nods um, that we also now will put um, data and everything up into the, the you know, reticles of what we're doing that. We've already had three soldier touch points as we test this. And if you look at the increased lethality of our soldiers just by taking that thermal reticle off of the weapon and putting it up into their eye, uh, the testing has been off the chart. Um, and this is all through existing systems right now. Uh, the other portion of this is obviously dual tube, which gives you greater mobility, gives you depth perception. Anyone who's ever used single tube versus dual tube, you realize the uh, different capability, especially if you're doing offensive operations. Um, the next one is heads up display 3.0 that we're working very closely with General Gervais in the synthetic training environment. And we're already starting to prototype that with industry as well. Um, that one should come out in about 18 months, our first prototype. And then the adaptive soldier architecture. Um, what we realized uh, pretty quickly too as we looked at this is, if you just look at any of the, just take nods as an example. Every company that builds a nods, they, br they build their own uh, mount. If you looked at how much money the United States Army has spent just on mounts, it is, the taxpayers would not be happy. I'll put it to you that way, is a significant amount. So you now have a universal mount that we've put out. And uh, Chris Schneider's here, him and his team up there at Fort Belvoir have done a remarkable job. So we now have a standard mount for anything that we develop. That's true for everything that goes on to a soldier or a squad now. So it, it, we will put out those standards now and everything that we put out for uh, stuff that we want to get. The next one is tactical power. Uh, Everything that we do, we're trying to increase uh, you know, what we're doing from whether it's digital, uh, thermal, that means that we need more power. As you know, energy, anything we have that produces energy right now that we can put on a soldier, that is, uh, that is not going up as dramatically as the demand is. So we now have to make sure that anything we develop, the demand is either keeping it neutral or down. And right now we're consolidating things onto various systems that may increase the energy for that one item, but the overall demand is going down. And you'll see that in the things that we're doing. And then again, training is very important. So uh, right now we're working with uh, Major General Brito, uh, the Maneuver Center of Excellence Commander has approved a pilot to move from 14 weeks to 21 weeks. And we're working with uh, General Townsend, who's also been briefed on this concept, and then also the Chief of Staff of the Army. And uh, we, we look forward to that pilot uh, coming here pretty quickly because this is all great, but if you don't have a trained, ready soldier, it doesn't really matter. And that's, that's the last thing we want to talk about of the things we're doing. These are all the future capabilities that we're looking at. Um, and with that, uh, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I want to open it up to any questions uh, from the field. Yes, sir. with PEO Strive for training. Absolutely. Good. So.
When it says OSID and AIT extension at the bottom there, what does that look like? So uh, the, the test program that we're going to do, uh, right now it's currently 14 weeks, and uh, our proposed uh, pilot that we'll start in July, we'll move it out to 21 weeks. And, um, that's, and what we want ultimately is we want some, you know, any soldier that graduates from OSIT, that they can immediately go in and join uh, any formation that they need to go to, no matter what phase of the sustained readiness model they're in, to make sure they're ready to go. Um, specifically, uh, we're working on a number of things. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we're training them on all the skills we assess they need to fight against a near peer. Okay, very important. Um, also, we want to make sure that we are, uh, just as you look at the, the length of time that we have and what happens to someone when they show up to their first unit, we want to make sure that they're ready and we're not, they're fully prepared with any of the physical and mental demands that they're going to get. So that, those are the three big things we want to make sure we increase. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm a little interested in the squad operations around the ABCT. So is there any effort to align what they're seeing in their heads-up displays and being able to talk to the vehicles and have a common, uh, you know, common UI, if you will, a, a visual so that, you know, when the gunner decides, okay, I'm going to be a squad leader and he moves out, he doesn't have a completely new set of optics to learn? Yes, so a couple things here. One, if you look at all the people that we're working with across, so one, this ties into Major General Gallagher and the network, General Gervais and synthetic training, but also with, uh, you know, Brigadier General L'Esperance and Next Generation Combat Vehicle. So if you look at that end user device that General Gallagher already has and is using, okay, if you drop a pin on Heads Up Display 1.0, we're already doing this. So if you drop a pin off that end user device, Okay, that automatically, when it hits that end user device of that soldier, if however they set it, it'll automatically populate. So that, right, so that, that uh, Bradley uh, commander off that end user device, and he's looking at broader than just the individual soldier, but we're gonna put on platforms as well. You'll drop that pin and say, look to the east. Whenever you look to the east, you'll see that red dot. That's not make-believe, we're doing that right now, okay? so. All, all those first three user uh, test points, again, increase lethality by taking that site and projecting it up into their reticle, tested it in January. What you're describing, all the, you know, basically icons that we want to use, we're just down selecting now and the soldiers are telling us what they want on that, so. Most of what you described was either material or training solutions so far. Could you talk about the other dot mil PF out outcomes of this work? So, um, the one very good question, sir. And that's why the importance of we have to be very well nested with General Brito and what the Center of Excellence is doing. So whenever we talk about OSIT extension, uh, I would tell you one of the number one things we want to do there is we want to make sure that we're looking at the performance of the individual as well. Because that additional seven weeks will make sure that we can increase both, not, not just what they're doing as far as shooting better and everything else, but we're now preparing them better for a near peer uh, battlefield. So that's extremely important to us. Uh, with next generation squad weapon possibly coming in in a new caliber, at what point does Lake City Army Ammunition Plant start looking over your shoulder and doing some modeling? So uh, Colonel Hector, I'm not sure Brigadier General Abrams, Abramson is here or not, but uh, he, he and his team are already part of this CFT. Um, in fact, we're going out to Lake City to go over what that plan is. Uh, it's a, I, mean, I don't want to get into the timeline here, but it's a very aggressive plan to get that first saw replacement out. Um, and I would tell you, we're already um, starting that process. So uh, we will look forward to getting out there. But General Abramson and Colonel Hector Gonzalez are already doing great work with that. Hey, sir, I'm sorry, Major Underwood uh, from System for Health. Uh, the question from my team is, how are we creating a uh, more independently re resilient soldier using um, sleep activity and nutrition? So that's, um, that, that's not part of this CFT, but I'll put my infantry commandant hat on. Um, Colonel Kelly Kendrick, the 198th commander uh, out there who runs OSIT, he's already doing uh, all of that. Um, he has a study ongoing right now 
to make sure that we're, we're, we're properly uh, feeding all of our soldiers and making sure that when they come out, they're stronger. So, thank you. Any other questions? Sir, do any of your initiatives up there uh, uh, provide Cat 1 targeting information to mortars or other indirect fires? So we're, we're working on that. So the, the first thing is, and uh, Chris, uh, I'm going to send it over to you if you want to add anything once I say this. So whatever we're going to put up into that nod, you can actually put mills and all those other things. So we have not, uh, with this current version, had it so that you can reach out get a grid off of a target and it automatically populates up there. We can do that. It's just a matter of putting all those systems together. Now, if you look at what we're going to put on there from a small arms fire control, and Elliot Kagan's is back there, is that really both of them coming together, uh, we could do that. However, okay, that's weight. So it's, it, it, that's that trades that we're talking about. So the first versions, no, we're not going to do that. But I think we could get there uh, over time. You're probably talking 3.0 across what this is and what that is. But the, the first versions won't have that. <clears throat> the first version of that next generation squad weapon will have, uh, it will send out, when we talk about aim augmentation, the laser will go out, it'll hit a target and come back, and it'll give you a better solution just to shoot the target. Chris, anything you want to add? Yes, sir, you're spot on. Uh, we, we actually may be able to do that in Heads Up 1.0. Uh, and it, it'll take the Cat 1 grid information that we get from Jets uh, or LDR 3 uh, and put it up into the display. But the system itself will not uh, generate a Cat 1 grid. Does, it, does that help? Okay. So, so to Chris's point, whatever we want to project up into that reticle, that tube, is pretty easy. It's just a matter of how you get it and then how much data. You know, so you want to... You know, we don't need too much information in there either. Too. That's that's leadership, but you know we, we got to figure that out. That's why those soldier touch points are so important. So. Sir, I know you're going to ask me a good question. I could tell by your demeanor earlier. Do any of your initiatives uh, include the weight reduction on your vertical lift uh, aircraft? Um, I, I just want to make sure I understand. Are are we trying to make the soldier lighter? Ultimately, or how is this linked into FVL? Absolutely. Okay. Do you want to reduce the weight on the, on the, on the aircraft itself to give you more payload capability? Uh, I mean, I'm an infantryman. Sure. Of, of course, I want everything to be lighter, cheaper, shoot better, and do everything else. Okay. But that's going to be trades. Uh, but what I do know about FVL, um, I mean, compared to our current helicopters, that thing's going to be able to lift a lot. So, but yeah, I think we're, we're, we're very well nested. By the way, all this stuff right here in particular, that's going to be of great interest to uh, our pilots as well. And, and so, again, a start point is the 100,000. But then after that, it's a decision of the Army of what's going to spin out. So, sir. Any, any ideas on what the next weapons caliber might be? So again, we put out five prototypes opportunity notice. Part of it is we want industry, we want every, uh, they'll come back with their proposals. We will pick those five, and then there's the one that we're working right now. So what we have given out to industry, part of those industry days, is we have used uh, a government-developed 6.8 round as a point of departure. But we do not want to limit, if someone comes back and they come back with some other caliber, it is a better thing. We're interested, of course we are. We want what's best. So, but 6.8 is the point of departure. And that's been shared with industry. Elliot, anything you'd like to add to that? So. Okay, I appreciate everyone's time. You all have a great day.